Welcome back. We're joined here by Dan, as always. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Man, life is great as always. Glad to be here with you. Awesome. In today's topic, we're going to be talking about thinking big. And in this process, let me give you a hint right away. I think we should be thinking big. Come on, don't give the hints to people right away. You just, just, just tell them spoiler, man. Come on. <laughs> well, then I guess spoilers alert. A little bit late, probably. That's right. <laughs> well, now we're going to go and talk about a little bit about uh, two concepts being content and being grateful. So what are I want to ask you this question. Um, what are the differences between the two? How do you describe each of them? And do you have a preference? Do you sh should people have to be content? Should they be grateful? What are your thoughts? Well, of course, these are completely different. You see, being grateful, it's about appreciating the things that you have right now and feeling happy about these matter because like you've worked so hard to gain this and that and now you're very happy about it. Unfortunately, uh, people sometimes confuse this with being content, that is satisfied, which means they say, this is enough and I'm going to settle. So ultimately, the major difference between being grateful and being basically uh, content is uh, being grateful is all about attitude, whereas being content is about being lazy and not taking action. So I really believe that we should be grateful for what we have right now. All the things we have, we should be quite happy for those. We should literally be grateful all the time. But uh, when it comes to uh, achieving other things in life, we always need to up the ante. So basically, you have to know that you need to up the ante and that you need to actually not be content. Well, as you mentioned with uh, gratefulness, I think I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I think being grateful for what you have and um, what you have achieved, uh, the success that you accumulated, is very good characteristic to have. It inspires you to, to achieve more, to go and get more. But at the same time, uh, it makes you happy about what you already gathered. So, Exactly. I couldn't agree with, with you more on that. Um, and with content, I don't personally have any problem with this state of content but um in general but i but i never consider it for myself i don't think i ever want to be you know content let, let me stop you right now Pujix. why you see nothing necessarily wrong with being content because i see a lot of things being wrong with it and i think it's stupid you should not be content so let's let's just you know have a, an argument here right right now why in the world do you think it's okay to be content? Well, I don't think it's okay for me to be content. I mean, I'm just saying in general, I don't, for but like any other person, I don't uh, particularly see any, you know. For anybody, it's not. And why for you just, I mean, like, this is, this is human life, man. Like, contentment eventually makes us not only not grateful, but friggin' depressed. Because at some point, we no longer take pleasure in what we have if we do not constantly try to up the ante and grow as a result of it. We become entitled, we become comfortable, and the things that we are now grateful for will no longer be with us, basically, will be taken away from us, and at some point, we will lose that gratefulness as well. Which is pre precisely why I don't, you know, consider for myself, but then again, every now and again, I come across some uh, people that have uh, reasons for themselves to be content i consider them to be well, you know relatively happy and i've i mean well my point is if they are happy with that um good for them but i wouldn't be happy with you well that's you know the thing is this about being content what's the exact listen i'm all for being grateful that is i'm so happy and i literally i mean i love to use the word thank you a lot because i think one of the be most beautiful terminologies in any language is thank you and not only giving thanks to other people for the things they do for you but giving thanks for the things you have and i literally i heard if you uh use the word thank you or thanks less than five or seven times per day you probably are not living a you know a very good life so i'm all for saying thank you i'm all for being uh, you know basically grateful but being content has nothing to do with being grateful being content simply means you say enough is enough what i have is enough and i have no intention of having anything else and that, that, from my perspective, is uh, counterproductive to our very uh, design as a species. And I think if you want to have a better lifestyle, you must be always grateful. But at the same time, you must re resist or even refuse to being content. 
No, I think I, I completely agree with you. But then my point was, I, I don't want to, you know, my argument is not about content. My argument is about, I don't want to be content. That's what I was going with. Exactly. And I get your point. I get your point, man. Right. That I want to be, uh, you know, ambitious or, or. Exactly. Yeah, but by the way, I mean, this is completely different than greedy, by the way, just than being greedy. I mean, how do you define greedy? First of all, Pujix, what is your definition of greedy exactly? That's actually a good question. What is, who is greedy? What is greedy? I don't know. I hear this all the time, like greedy, greedy, greedy. What, what does greedy mean? I mean, you know what? Let's actually look up a dictionary definition of uh, greedy here. Oh, that's the, that's the best way to shut these haters off. Right. Uh, there we go. So it goes like this. Greedy, having or showing an intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth or power. Having or showing an intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth or power. Which is, I, I get the you know negative tone, but I don't necessarily see a major problem with this either. I'm telling you. I mean, like, uh, greedy, first of all, in our society, when, when people use the word greedy... What they're really saying is, I am so jealous of you. So next time someone said, man, you're so greedy, what you're, what you're really saying is, God damn it, I'm, I'm so freaking jealous of you right now, okay? So that's the whole point. Now, from my perspective, there is another definition of greedy. Of course, the, defi the definition, definition is pretty cool and it's pretty good. But what I personally think about uh, you know, being greedy, it's when the means becomes the end. You see, for example, let's say you want to grow yourself as a person and you want to uh, somehow expand your business to experience growth. Now, in order to expand your business, one of the best measures of trying to scale your progress is to look at how much money you're making, right? So the more money you're making, the better your business is doing, and of course, the more you're growing. Now, here's the problem. Sometimes for people, making that money becomes the end in itself. So they are making money for the sake of making more money. That's from my perspective greed, and I don't like it. Again, this is the real definition of greed, but when people call you greedy in most cases, what they're really saying is that you are so ambitious and I'm so freaking jealous of you in general. But from my perspective, being greedy is also not good. Why? Why being greedy is not good? Because being greedy means you have confused the means and the end. We are not here to make more money and to use that money to make even more money. That's just stupid, basically. We are here to live a happy life, to develop our potentials, and to constantly enjoy the feeling of happiness, which, by the way, requires us not to be content. This principle is called the flow principle. We've already mentioned this before in previous uh, episodes. Flow is a state of happiness that exists right between stress as well as boredom. Being content usually leads to a lot of boredom. Because at that case, you're not growing and the challenges in your life are not growing with you. Which means at some point you will get bored and you will start to kill that boredom in unhealthy ways by wasting your time, by watching TV five hours per day, by doing other things. And then here, here comes a guy who doesn't do that. Here comes a guy who dedicates his or her life entirely to, dedicate, to, to growth and to expanding him or his or her abilities. And then you say, oops, I'm jealous of this greedy guy. OK, so this, from my perspective, is why it's important not to be greedy. And at the same time, not to be content, because ultimately finding that sweet spot in the middle is really the way to go. That was a good, good uh, definition of greedy. And with that, I'm completely on board. Um, and, um, you know, I don't I think if you're if you're uh, the means become the end, then that's a problem. But you want to be be contributing to community and be be ambitious enough and not content. I completely agree with that. I can of course. And growing at the same time, enjoying the fruits of other people's labors as well. I mean, why not? This, this, these are all great. Precisely. And with that said, of course, you don't want to be greedy. Of course, you don't want to be not contributing to your community. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with um, striving for more at, at any given time and wanting more and, and going to get it and achieve it. Exactly. With that said, I personally think being content is is very dangerous because at that point you're sort of at the state of being you know dead dying contentment leads to the death of the species as a whole at some point it's just the way it is man the reason the reason that our species have survived until today is because of the fact that our species are hierarchical in nature 
So in our hierarchies, we have leaders and followers. And as you know, leaders are never content, obviously. So it's solely because of the leaders since millions of years ago in our tribes and until today who have pushed the people towards more that we are now here. And because of this, otherwise we would have, you know, died out a long time ago, I'm telling you. Right, and not just there. If you, if you think about it, like if we were content as a species, we would never make the advancement that we have today. Um, like uh, all, all, if we invented wheel, didn't want to take it further, we wouldn't have cars or trains or uh, anything of the sort. So content doesn't just play a role in just the survival. That's right. But also to to the, to the advancements and progress of of mankind and getting us where we are. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and, and as a, as an example, a few weeks ago, I was talking to this friend of mine who was uh, at his work, and he was very well satisfied, and he was having good good, good time at his work. He he was earning exactly. And well, it's a comfort zone, man. Exactly. Precisely, and then at at a certain point, he he has this uh, this scarce that he uh, he sees of <clears throat> excuse me a few of his his uh, colleagues I mean being um, laid off at the job, and then so he has this wake up call and realizes, okay, I mean, um, what do I have to do? I have to you know um, I can't I can't really be in this comfort zone as you mentioned. The comfort zone is a good good word for it. And so he's like, okay, what do I do? What is my next plan? So this... Ha! It's always painful. It's always painful, I know. I mean, you get fired this time, but at, at the same time, so you, you can't really be content because you have to progress, you have to develop and make sure that you are for, for your own security even. Like, I don't understand the, the protectionist people who actually behave this way as, either because with that, I mean, you are, if, if you want to be protected, then you have to progress and being content is actually sort of the opposite of that mindset anyways because you also progress for security right it is but also what is your opinion on the on the matter you know earlier on you mentioned about your friend and the fact that he almost got fired he got lucky of course this time be careful buddy next time you might actually not get so lucky so what i'm saying is we create this comfort zone and we tend to stay in that comfort zone for most of us unless and until something happens in the outside world that forces us outside of this comfort zone. And at that time, it's usually very, very painful because we have no preparation for it. So the other strategy in life is to simply kind of like an athlete, if you will, you literally step by step train yourself gradually to leave the comfort zone. In the process, you actually become stronger and ready to face with the challenges. So if at some point in the future you face with a crisis, you are ready for it because you have been living a great portion of your life out of your comfort zone anyways. I remember once I was talking to a friend of mine and he said, uh, dude, I don't know where comfort zone is, but I don't, want that, I, don't want, uh, I don't want their passport. I just want their visa occasionally to be there and then get out of the country. So the comfort zone is not a place where you want to live habitually. You want to stay there temporarily for rest and recovery, let's call it R&R, &R, and then you want to leave that place because ultimately that's where the good stuff is. Now, thinking big is uh, basically what leads to this type of lifestyle because ultimately uh, the comfort zone is very comfortable, but there, there is no growth, there's no major possibility and everything is predictable. So if you want something more, then you need to have that level of motivation to get you out of that comfort zone. And of course, that's where Big thinking comes into play. So basically what big thinking is, there's, there are many terminologies. And uh, Tony Robbins calls it uh, raise your standards, basically. Uh, Brian Tracy says, move out of what you know towards what you want. And of course, Grant Cardone calls it 10x everything. That is, uh, these are all the same concepts, by the way. I mean, like all the major uh, uh, mentors say the exact same thing. They just use different terminologies, but it's pretty much the exact same concept. And that is, Think big, which means whatever goal you think you should have, make it much more than, uh, than what you think you deserve, and then you try to go for that. Why is this? Again, I, uh, I'm going to quote Tony Robbins. He said, people don't lack motivation. 
they just have goals that are impotent in nature. That is, they don't really arouse them. They don't really excite them. So once you have the kind of goals that truly excite you, I think leaving the comfort zone becomes almost automatic. You don't even think about leaving the comfort zone because at that point, leaving the comfort zone is a necessity to achieve that kind of vision. And more importantly, you enjoy the process because you know this is going for something big. So ultimately, thinking big means whatever you think you deserve, set something much bigger than you think you do not deserve. And only then you feel quite excited. That's when you say like, wow, like, dude, if I can achieve that goal, this will change my life. Only at that moment, something magical happens inside of you. You get that motivation and you're ready to, you know, head on, head on and head, head out of your uh, comfort zone. Because at that point, it's no longer the force of desperation as your friend hearing, oh boy, there's going to be some layoffs. In this case, it's about inspiration. Uh, because inspiration really is a strong source of power and motivation. And once you think big, you will have all of that motivation right under your belt and you're ready to actually head on out of that comfort zone and take on the new challenges. Oh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we that's, that's why I think we need major, massive goals because that that alone inspires us to, to do more. And, and then, I mean, the point is, like, a lot of people come up with this idea of, okay, I, we, we need to set realistic goals and have you know, goals that are attainable, um, but then um, you're not considering that n not necessarily you can you can you can set massive goals to inspire you, then take uh, major actions also to 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 be able to achieve those goals. And then you rationalize it. A lot of people and and mention by by mentioning basically, basically these are not really possible. I can't, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, ever achieve that major goal so i have to make more realistic goal there those that are more attainable by my you know standards by my capabilities um so so yeah i think i think then that that's where it becomes if people come up with reasons as why to not set those um massive goals these are, well, we call this right. Of course, you're right. Excuses. And but let me ask you something right now, Pujix. You mentioned the word realistic. And of course, we all know in the traditional uh, classic management style, we have this smart goal setting, which is specific, measurable, uh, attainable, realistic and time bound. So from your perspective, you mentioned our goals should be uh, or people think the goal should be realistic. What does it even mean to have a realistic goal? I don't understand. What's what's realistic? Well, the notion that I can personally attain it as an individual is it's not beyond me. Realistic exactly means being content. Realistic means nothing, man. I mean, your reality is always expanding. We had this, I had a similar discussion yesterday with uh, at a meeting, actually. Uh, and uh, they asked me the same question, like, Daniel, what, don't you think, as we we're talking about the whole 10x concept there as well. And they asked me, so Dan, what about like uh, goals that are not realistic? Reali realism and realistic makes no sense because we in this world are either shrinking or they are, we are expanding. We are never staying at the same level. Now, realistic, what, what seems realistic to you now is very different than what seemed realistic to you, uh, let's say, 10 years ago. You, Pujix, yourself, when you were 10 years, 10 years old, what type of things seemed realistic to you? I, I don't know, like uh, getting stealing some cookies from the top of the refrigerator or something or going out there. I'm telling you. Yeah, you're right. At, the, at that point, the reaching the top of the refrigerator was the ultimate goal. That's it. I'm telling you, like, what we think to be realistic now will be different a day, a month, a year, a century, uh, let's say, even a century from now. Like, these are all, I mean, if you think, like, long term, basically, your whole life, a lot of things can change. I mean, think of Warren Buffett. I mean, the, the guy is, uh, of course, quite aged now, but the things that he can do now are quite different than the things he could do when, once he started his investment firm, right? So what I'm saying is this, the whole realistic term is quite BS from my perspective because realism simply means what I think I can do now. This means you will never stretch yourself. The whole point of setting big goals is to stretch yourself and grow. Otherwise, you simply think, well, this is just the whole point. So ultimately, when people say realistic, they mean two things. Number one, the things that they can achieve right now, which is obviously within their comfort zone. And number two, the things that others they, to tell them they can achieve, like especially their parents or their friends, both of which are completely bullshit. Because what others tell you can do and cannot do, again, is based upon your current level of performance. And here's the darn fact, man. Once you actually start taking massive action and think big, 
a couple of things happens. Number one, you get a lot of haters. Oh, man, these haters will can't, especially the ones who know you for a long time. They just can't believe it. Like, look at this, this, this dude. Come on. What are you doing, man? And because they, t- they have an idea of what they can do. And they, of course, they take that t- take that belief to other people as well. And you say, well, well, that's that's also what he can do. Like, and once you go beyond that, they they say, like, well, 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 this guy's going, this guy's going out, the way out of the comfort zone right now. This is bad for me as well. Maybe maybe I could do. Maybe something's wrong with me. So they feel bad about themselves and they start hating and they get they get jealous. So ultimately, the word realistic, in my opinion, means absolutely nothing because the word realistic is a goddamn lie that people tell themselves when they don't want to take action. Realistic means within the comfort zone or the things that others think I can do, both of which are completely nonsense. Exactly. Precisely why I think uh, coming up with these notions that the realistic goal is not precisely a good, a good idea either, because then when you set, set, set those massive goals at the time, it's unrealistic, perhaps. But then you do stuff that you achieve those goals, then you will think of ma- even more major goals that are um, that are attainable for you in the future that you are, you're not even dreaming of right now, right? That's that's uh, that's why we need those massive goals to be, basically be able to inspire us to do more, to surpass one stage and reach to the new one, to the other, right? Exactly. I was, I was actually having this other conversation with another friend of mine who was saying, "Oh, this 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 I can't do this. This is not attainable by by me. I can't." reach that but then i was like oh you remember the other goal the other day that you were saying the same thing and you <clears throat> excuse me you already achieved that and you made it possible so this is why is this any any different than the other right it's the same same scenario exactly it's all point so it's just about that shift in the mindset to think differently think uh, more massively and think big um, and when the shift comes it's all it's all good let me ask you something, Pujix. What did you do yourself to, to start thinking big? I mean, how did you push yourself out of your comfort zone and started thinking big? Well, that's actually a very good question. So I was, I always considered myself an, an ambitious person. So, but I was always contained by these, you know, the, the environmental, uh, situ- social situation that bounded me to to be content. But then. I started by looking into my my heroes, the people who I considered the, the major players of the game at the point, uh, the ones who I would look up to, a wannabe perhaps. And then I looked into, okay, what do these guys have or do that I don't, and I'm not doing or I don't have? And all of which they, they these people had in common in in all cases was that they were their their thinking was different. They were thinking major. They were thinking big, and. And their their action was different. They were taking massive action, massive amount of action to match that um, those 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 thinking to be able to do it. So then I shifted the gear, and and here I am today. Thinking in action, man. Thinking in action. That's it. Precisely when you match up your your major major thinking with uh, major action, math, massive action, then 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 those massive goals that you set are not anymore unattainable. Rather, they're very much within the realm of attainability. So. That's right. So you, you already mentioned that. Think, Of course, we are today focused mainly on thinking big, but of course, our listeners should know that thinking big ought to be backed up by massive action. So uh, when you think big and it's like, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this and that, but if you don't take any action, of course, you won't have much chance because thinking big alone cannot get you anywhere. However, I really believe, again, that massive action thing can only be sustainable if your dream is good enough and it really inspires you because guys success is a marathon you cannot win it overnight doesn't matter how fast you go at some point you'll get tired which means you got to keep persisting and because of this you got to have that dream that so propels you forward you have no way of quitting that's very very critical but obviously taking massive action it's wonderful and of course when it comes to massive action i cannot think of any better mentor than Grant Cardone himself, because uh, this guy's really a master of, uh, ma- you know, taking ma- how, how to convince people to take massive action, basically. And uh, quite frankly, I think that's one of the best examples we can take. And he simply calls it 10 times more, like whatever the average person is doing, we got to be 10 times more. And only then you will have a life that is 10 times better than the average, which is exactly where we want to be, because ultimately that's uh, where every ambitious person has to be headed. So 
from my perspective, when it comes to taking massive action, the most important factor is understanding the fact, uh, understanding the notion that success requires sacrifice. I'm sorry, you cannot be successful without uh, working hard and working smart and learning from your poor decisions. I mean, like we all have to learn from that. And because of this, usually people have to understand that becoming successful in any endeavor, in er any area of expertise requires dedication as well as endurance because you will have setbacks and this is inevitable in every and any field you can imagine. It's always the same. However, you want to have, build that level of discipline required to be able to take uh, massive action on a consistent basis. I mean, anybody can take massive action for a couple of hours, a couple of days. I mean, I've seen this all the time. Like I see people, I talk to people about different things. Like, let's say I want to talk to a person who wants to take his life to a whole new level. And this guy after my street, like, man, I'm so motivated. Let's do this. I am driven. And you call the guy after one week, what happened to your goals? Like, oh, shit. Well, actually, I just stopped it, you know? So, the fact of the matter is that people can get excited and start taking massive action for a day or two, maybe for a couple of weeks. But ultimately, that's not going to change anything because the top players are the ones who are taking massive action on a consistent basis. For how long? For how long? For 12 years. That's how long it takes to become an average millionaire in the United States. 12 years. Man, I mean, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of effort, right? So ultimately, you want to have that marathon mindset when it comes to thinking big because thinking big ultimately requires you to keep that dream inside of you when the entire world tells you huh, well that's not possible come on yeah what you've been drinking or something you've been you've been smoking so let's be honest man things will happen people will doubt you this is like dudes i mean come on you're just uh your your goals are so unrealistic so you will have the haters on one side who just feel threatened. Literally, they, their entire psychology is threatened by you because you are ruining all of their excuses that have, that have kept them uh, sane and happy for years and decades. And secondly, of course, you will have uh, the ones who will try to convince you with, the, with their nice voice. Like, you know, man, that's not realistic, man. Like they, 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 they really try to actually sound sincere and they, try, they, they, they pretend like they're really helping you. Like... Man, listen, I mean, your uh, your head's in the skies and like it's just going too far, man. Take it easy. Lay off a little bit. So that's <laughs> that's my problem with these people. So ultimately, you want to you got to fight a lot of things. You will have to fight the outside forces that requires you to attain that goal. You got to keep the haters at bay and the naysayers and all these ones the same. I mean, like it's a battle, buddy. But the good news is it's totally damn worth it. Oh, yeah, I totally worth it. And I totally agree with you. And at the end of the day, if we start, you know, listening to everybody around us, it's going to be no matter what you do, there are going to be as you as you always say, they're going to be haters and, 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 and somebody who admires you. But then at the end of the day, you will face opposition, people not believing in you. So if you start listening to people, it's not really going to work like that. And um, yeah, I mean, things can go wrong in this process and will go wrong, perhaps. But that's that's what it is. You just keep keep trying. Come on, dude. Things always go wrong. Our job is to make them right. I mean, why we're here. We're not here to see life as a friggin' movie. That's why I have a problem with people who have this spectator mindset. You see, that's the reason why people think small, man. The reason is we are a spectator nation. Of course, not just the U.S. I'm talking about like the global culture here. People are becoming spectators. You see, your life, you're on this planet because you are supposed to actually solve the problems. You're supposed to deal with all the things that go wrong and make them right. This world is not supposed to you know, be a smooth ride where you just look down and you look at like a movie for 90 friggin' minutes. We are here to make the wrong right, or at least to get around the wrong to get to something better. And ultimately, when we have that spectator mindset where we expect things to just flow naturally, then that's when we just simply get disappointed because we assume things should go right. If they're not going right, oh, oh, life, life is bad. I mean, life, life's just so difficult. Dude, life is supposed to be like this. This is the, this is why you're here. You're not here to experience life as some uh, pleasant experience that you just got to sit back and enjoy. You're supposed to get your hands dirty. You're supposed to make the wrong right. And the wrong things should happen because that's the whole point. So once you get rid of that spectator mindset, it becomes a lot easier to take massive action. Yeah, exactly. And I don't understand, like, nobody told us that life is going supposed to be easy or fun or whatever. It's a, 
it's just like who promised you that i don't you know i don't see any of that like being promised to me it's just about you know it the challenges and solving problems and puzzles and moving forward from then on of course there's a lot of roots to cultures and religions around the world but ultimately what really matters here that people should understand that life is not designed with humanity's interest in mind once we get rid of that illusion and once we understand that ultimately life is about making it not experiencing it as a passive thing then that's when they realize why they actually uh, ha- have to do something and one of the reasons that i think this is uh, rampant nowadays is of course other than the cultural factors it's uh, just this whole movie cu- we're living in a movie culture man we just sit back and just let others do the whole thing that's not how you should live your life you got to get your hands dirty that's very critical Oh yeah, and you mentioned the specta- in spectator, uh, you know, mindset. I, I like, I love movies. I watch movies, uh, l- literally, and I, I do watch other people's lives stories as well. But then, I want to write my own story, and the reason I watch these movies or other people's real stories is to basically inspire me to do more, to do better, and at the same time, you know, give me ideas of what I want to do with my own. Um, especially in the real cases that I'm actually studying other people's lives, even the, the you know the the, uh, the 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 actual movies that are out there, it's just they're just a source of inspiration and ideas. But at the end of the day, I would want to write my own story and then you know go go watch my movie, like live my movie. Why would why do I want to watch it while I'm actually acting it and living it, right? So so yeah, I I, I agree with you on that. Like. Like, literally, you got to think about your life story as a movie, as a story, as a novel, whatever it is. Let's be honest. Most novels and stories and movies are freaking boring. Do you want your life story to be yet another one of those stories that nobody ever reads or hears about? Or do you want to make, uh, do you want to make your life, uh, you know, a story that can uh, somehow inspire other people, make it a great example for other people to follow? So that's ultimately your choice. And thinking big is all about that because... Part of you mentioned earlier about greed and how selfish it is, but I think part of thinking big actually is about being a little less selfish and a bit more selfless and trying to leave a legacy, man. I mean, like if you live an average life, you experience certain emotions, you have some some fun times, and of course you'll be down most of the time, let's be honest. But the fact that it matters in the end, it's over and there's nothing. But if you think big, man, you can actually influence and impact the world. This means you, you will leave a legacy that will allow others to experience that heightened level of joy that is only possible once you leave that comfort zone and tell yourself, I want to do big stuff. And you create uh, an example for others to follow. And this actually, from my perspective, is one of the best ways to help others. Earlier on in our previous episode, we talked about charity and whatnot. And I think one of the best ways to do charity part of that new chair uh, the neo charity will be to uh somehow lead an example leave, leave you know live by an example and to uh somehow leave a legacy for the the people to follow to understand that life can be experienced uh at, at a far higher level of uh joy and flow and excitement and happiness and once they understand that then their concept of reality also changes and let's be honest we look to the outside world to define what is real, what is not, what is realistic and what is not. And once we ourselves uh, take the initiative, leave the comfort zone and think big, we actually make others think that this is also possible for them. I mean, the reason that we are doing right now the things that we do is because to some extent we have seen some other superstars or some other you know, uh, mentors who have done it. A great example I, I basically uh, learned a while back uh, – of course, this was, this was in the book Awaken the Giant Within. I, I heard this again from Tony Robbins. He said that uh, before uh, th- this whole marathon thing was supposed to uh, be very slow and it should be very, you know, it was not a very fast thing. And it, I think it was maybe 30 or 40 years ago where one man, I don't know his name exactly, decided to run a marathon at a very high speed because people thought it's physically impossible. And uh, he, But he said, I'm going to do it anyways. And they said, dude, you're going to die. Don't do this. It's bad. You're going to have a heart attack or something. And he did it. And after he did it, literally the same year, four other people did it. Why? Because those other four also saw it in them, the possibility of being a super athlete, but saw this one man take the initiative. He did it. They said, if he did it, I can do it too. And guess what? They did. So I think it's part, a part of our ethical uh, obligation and responsibility 
to literally think big because by doing so, we inspire others to do the same. We literally play with their heads and we change their very concept of what is realistic and what is possible. And this allows many other people to follow suit. And if you live in a society where the majority are trying to think big, man, that society will definitely be prosperous. Oh, yeah. The, the, those people's perception is fascinating. Like, how many times do we see or hear the stories of, uh, you know, how everybody thought something should be the one way and then it, it pivoted and somebody did the opposite? So defied the fact that it should be that way. And a lot of people followed uh, after that. Um, I, I, I can't. It's, it's, it's very interesting subject that the people's perception that. It's not necessarily the reality because it keeps changing. I mean, how can it be, right? Also, I personally think for myself and I really for a lot of people that it's actually not really ethical if you can do more and not doing more because then if you can contribute more to your society and you're not, then I cannot make make sense of how that's that's okay, right? Exactly. Exactly. You are reinforced. It's kind of it's kind of like uh, you know giving. Uh, money to the panhandlers. We're just promoting a bad culture. The same thing happens here. Many of the people who accuse you, Pujiks, of being, I don't know, greedy and being so, I don't know, arrogant and whatnot, many of these people themselves are living very selfish lives and they are the most unethical creatures on earth. And that is precisely why they become haters, you see, because they think that by doing so, they're, you know, they're uh, remaining normal, but ultimately they're actually hurting their own societies and taking others down as well. So by you taking the initiative, trying to inspire others, you're actually helping the whole world. And I think that's uh, one of the most important responsibilities of every human being. You know, I'm a firm believer in the fact that uh, nobody owes nobody anything. And because of this fact, all that we do is for kindness. And more importantly, that's what makes doing kind and doing nice stuff quite enjoyable because once you know you don't owe anybody anything you don't owe anybody inspiration and then you try to inspire them this actually feels this sense of altruism feels so great because you know this is not my responsibility this is what i'm doing for the sake of you know loving these people and whatnot and this gives you a great sense man i'm telling you so it's much better to live big because once you are small you don't help anybody you're just a burden uh, on other people's shoulders basically But once you start thinking big, you actually not only serve more, because let's be honest, to realize big ambitions, you have to help a lot of people, man. Like Zig Ziglar says, you can have anything you want in the world if only you help enough people have what they want. So we, we haven't uh, still talked about the exact uh, elements of taking big actions. We're going to have another post, just another podcast just about this one. But ultimately, in order to uh, take big action, man, and in order to realize big dreams, You cannot do that by just sitting in your room and thinking. You got to go out there and help a lot of people. And this process itself allows you to contribute a lot to the people around you. And that's why I think it's so important to do that. Because let's be honest, you can be content and say, well, um, I'm going to just go home and just um, uh, drink some friggin' beer in front of TV for six hours. I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. It's pretty happy for me. Yeah, but during those six friggin' hours where you're drinking beer and watching TV, you are not helping anyone else. During the same time, you could actually do something else with your friends or with other people to have fun and make sure that they also have fun. So this and this in the process, you can actually become uh, a lot better. And, uh, you know, this this really makes life a lot more exciting. So I really think that thinking big and being greedy in the right way is actually the, the least selfish thing imaginable for me personally. You can actually contribute a lot to the societies. And at the same time, you have to, you know, you have to have a preparation for your future, for the unforeseen, unprecedented, uh, unprecedented events. And then how can you do that? You have to be prepared for that. And one of the, the ways to do so is that to do way beyond the thing that you currently need because the, the things might change, the un, unexpected events might happen. So that way it's basically ethical for you to, to do more. We can even later talk about ethics and morality in another podcast because I myself have, have my own definition of what, what it means to be ethical and moral, but that's hopefully another show. Right, that's true. We can't really talk about everything in you know one uh, one episode. So one, one other thing that, that I also want to address here is back to the idea of perception is sometimes we just don't consider how how small we think. Like, um, for example, right now for me, for like a billion dollar might be a lot of money but then 
if the, the idea of the 10x, right? If I start thinking about 10 billion, if I if I actually acquired a one billion dollars, then it's it's doable because it's already done. So now I'm thinking about 10 billion, and, and now I'm a trillion. Even now I'm thinking small because I'm talking about billions. Uh, you know, I, I can go further. Oh, man, I like it. A lot of zeros, buddy. A lot of zeros. Let's make a trillion right now. Let's go for trillion. <laughs> Even then, see, at some point, we just don't know what's next because we are thinking so small, we just don't know. What's the next level, man? Let's go. Is it zillion? <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, well, anyhow, I just wanted to, you know, make that point of, you know, small thinking and the impact it has and how it's all perception, it's all relative and it can't change. So um, to, we're at the end of the, our show pretty much. So just to, you know, wrap up. Uh, do you have any final comments that you want our audiences to hear? For sure, man. Just to all of our listeners, understand that life is supposed to be happy. And to be happy, think big. There is no, you have no other choice, man. There's no other way. You've got to think big because thinking big will allow you to be in that flow chart. Because by thinking big, you're constantly uh, expanding your cha the challenge in your life as well as your skills. So as your skills are developed, and as the level of challenge in your life is gradually and constantly increased, you become happier as well. You contribute more to the societies and you will experience such a level of joy and happiness in life that you've never thought possible. So this is why it's so critical and so crucial for all of us to start thinking big, to set ambitious goals and to back up those goals with a lot of action. Awesome. This has been a very fun episode. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. And with that, we are going to adjourn until next week, next episode, Think Big.